Hey guys, Radic here from NetVault. I'm here on site at one of our clients where we're doing an installation for the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries where we're installing a Starlink Plus 4G seamless failover service on the KI Ross behind me here. So I want to show you the equipment of what we're going to be installing here and introduce you to some of the members of the team. So I've got here Shane, he's our marine technician. He's going to be running the cables and installing the service itself on the back of the boat. I've also got Graham here, he's the skipper of the boat who's going to be supervising and making sure we're doing a great job for the actual installation itself. As far as the equipment that we're installing, obviously the Starlink terminal itself. That's going to be mounted inside a radome that you can see here. And this radome is going to be mounted on a custom fabricated mount that we've had made specifically for this particular boat. As part of the installation as well, we've got our seamless failover technology, which we're using Portinet routers here for this, that we're going to be installing inside the cockpit of the boat, along with wireless throughout the boat itself. The other part of the solution here is also 4G LTE failover, so that when Starlink drops out or there's an issue with bad weather, the service can keep running here, and this is powered by these 4G LTE antennas that are here as well. So guys, let's get cracking on this and get this installed and up and running. All right guys, so we have finished the physical part of the installation here. You can see we've got the Starlink dish itself mounted inside our radome, um, and you can see it powering up and initializing from there. So nice and sturdy and secure on this custom mounted base to keep that dish you know, nice and steady and secure. We've got the radome that we'll put on top shortly. What we've also done on the side over here is prepared some 4G LTE antennas. So these are temporarily mounted on the side here and um, uh, that will provide our failover connectivity for when Starlink drops out because of satellite loss, bad weather, anything like that. So it gives us that seamless failover solution between Starlink and 4G LTE. Now we've got all these cables temporarily mounted uh, run through here. Um, this is a temporary setup for the time being. If the trial goes well here then Starlink gets upgraded to the back of the boat over the, where that KVH dome is um, and we can utilize the 4G antennas that you can see in front of me over here. So let's get this underway, put the radome on top and uh, let's go into the cockpit and have a look what's in there. Okay, so we've finished upstairs and Starlink has been installed inside the radome along with the 4G antennas for this particular service. We're now down in the cockpit area, so let's have a look at the equipment that we've got down here. So we've got our Starlink router that we've installed and that's connected to Starlink upstairs, obviously. Now that's then connected to this Fortinet router. Now the Routing and security type functions that come in the base Starlink router are pretty rubbish, so we've given the client something a bit more beefy, being Fortinet. Now, the Fortinet router also provides our seamless failover service as well, so we can uh, fail over from the primary Starlink service to 4G LTE in under one second, and this is what these antenna cables are for, for those 4G antennas that are upstairs. Also, what we've got here is just a little dumb switch to connect to the Starlink uh, router because when you start using high-end routers, you do need to have a, a network switch there, otherwise you get performance and reliability problems on the Starlink. Also here is one of our monitoring nodes that we can then monitor and provide performance uh, uptime statistics for management here to be able to see exactly what's going on. Behind here as well, we've got a PoE injector, and that PoE injector is for this Fortinet wireless access point. Again, because the wireless that comes built in on the Starlink router is not that great, we put it into bypass mode and use a proper Wi-Fi 6 router to be able to provide full Wi-Fi coverage here on the boat itself. Okay, so that's the equipment that we've got installed here. So let's jump onto the computer and see what this looks like from a PC configuration perspective. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got on the PC with all the equipment that we've got connected here. So all our services that where we deploy a Starlink solution for a client, we always give them access to Netmon. So let's have a look at Netmon and see what the client has access to uh, within all these statistics and information. So I'm gonna log in here with the client's login details to Netmon. 
We can see the ping times associated with this service. So this is the ping times via the Starlink connection. And uh, when we look at the history of that, we can look at the current ping times, the ping time over the last you know, couple of hours, two days, 30 days, you know, last year, a great way of of obtaining some statistical information, historical information as to what's happening from these uh, from these particular services. We've also got information in here relating to how much traffic is going across that link. You know how much data is being pulled over the Starlink link, uh, over the 4G link. Any sort of traffic information that we've got, very very handy from a configuration perspective. Troubleshooting to make sure that we are delivering the service that we should be for our client. Other things that are useful here are things like our 4G LTE statistics to be able to see, you know, how well is the 4G connection performing? Do we have connection via 4G? Do we not? Etc. Etc. So Netmon is a great way of being able to showcase um, you know, how Starlink works and being able to track the performance and reliability of Starlink services over a longer period of time. Now, with any Starlink service, we've got to do the obligatory speed test. So let's go over to speedtest.com and hit go. Let's just choose a good speed test server. Starlink services are all based out of Sydney. All right, so what have we got on that? We've got, there it is starting, 50 meg, 100 meg, not too bad. All right, so we're getting the speed up there. And let's see what we get from an upload perspective. Okay, so not too bad from an upload and download perspective on that. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what we sort of expect from a speed test perspective. Now guys, one of the main features of this particular service, you know, being Starlink plus 4G seamless failover, is that seamless failover component. Being able to fail over from the primary Starlink link over to 4G LTE or a similar sort of technology in under one second. I wanna show you guys how this actually works in practice. So to start that off, let's jump over to the laptop and I wanna show you what IP address we've got on this particular service. So if we go show my IP address, you can see that's the IP address that we've got on this particular service. We'll blank out the first couple of octets. But I'm gonna fire up a little ping test here. And if we do a ping to Google, 8.8.8.8, right? And just let that run in the background. I wanna show you guys what actually happens when we go and disconnect the Starlink service to force that failover to 4G LTE. The way that I'll do that is by unplugging the Starlink cable here from this switch. Now you'll notice that when I unplug that cable, this WAN light will not go off. We've done that specifically because some services will uh, fail over when they detect a link going down. Whereas when Starlink has a dropout or a failure, that link will remain, so this is a good way of replicating that. So if you watch this here, if I disconnect that cable here, that's that Starlink cable disconnected, and have a look what's happened over here on this ping test. You can see that we've lost one ping packet, so that's one second failover before that has now continued on. And you can see the latency that we had when the service was on Starlink at the above here, and then the latency of what we've got on that service over 4G LTE. So let's go and have a look and see what our IP address is now and refresh that now that we've failed over. And you can see we still have that same public static IP address. So a great way of showing how that 4G LTE failover works uh, and maintaining that same public static IP address, which is really important, which I'll show you in a sec. But while we're here, I just want to flick back over to Netmon and just refresh the page over in Netmon so we can see what's happened there. And you can see we've got one alarm here now. So we've got an alert that's come up on that. And the alert that's come up is that we've now failed over from the primary Starlink to 4G LTE. So if that stays for a long period of time, how not guys will look into that and find out, well, what's going on? Is there equipment failure? What the hell's going on there? So great way of showcasing this information. And um, yeah, let's have a look at the next part. So guys, I also wanna show you what happens during a Zoom call or a video call that you might be having and Starlink will drop out and we fail over to 4G LTE. So I've fired up a Zoom session here with one of my staff members, Dane. Say good day, Dane. Howdy. All right, Dane, I want you to count down for me from 10 to one and I'm gonna disconnect that Starlink cable. So let's see what happens to the Zoom call as we disconnect that cable and simulate a failure. Go ahead. Uh, so 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, and that's five, that cable disconnected. Four, three, two, 
one. And you can zero. see we've not lost no audio. The call has continued and we have continued running over the 4G LTE network with that one second failover. Awesome. Thanks very much, Dane. Just wanted to showcase that to show people how that works. Thanks very much. All good. See you Thanks at the so office. Much. Bye. Bye. So guys, that seamless failover and how that works in a real world environment for Zoom calls, Teams calls, this is what makes the technology so powerful and so useful in mobile environments. Guys, that's it from me for this video. Hope you found it informative. If you've got any questions, please do reach out to me or the sales team here at NetVault. We'd be happy to answer your questions, show you through our seamless failover solutions, or even look at a proof of concept if that's of interest for you. That's it from me, guys. Have a great day. See you later.